Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I'm glad you came back to join me. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you enjoy what you see. So in today's build, we're going to recreate one of the most interesting and unique pieces of furniture that was in the homestead house. So let me tell you a little story about this piece of furniture. So grandma had in her living room, this beautiful upright piano. And I don't remember ever playing the piano, which was kind of odd to me because I was there as a young child. And I know with my own grandchildren, you get them anywhere near a musical instrument and that's all they want to do, especially if there's a piano around. But now knowing what I know, it makes perfect sense. You see, this wasn't just a piano. It was actually a Murphy bed. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, when it was upright, it was a piano. And when extra company came, she would fold down the Murphy bed and there would be a double bed inside. Now, I remember that piece very vividly from my childhood. But as I got older and I would tell people about this piano Murphy bed, everybody used to say to me, you couldn't possibly be remembering that correctly. There is no such thing as a piano that makes down into a bed. And I heard people say that so often that I honestly started to doubt myself. And I started to think that maybe I wasn't remembering that right. Maybe there was a piano and a Murphy bed. Anyway, about 15 years ago, I was on a little road trip with my cousin's wife. And we were in this little museum that had a ton of old furniture from around the turn of the century. And in the back of this little museum was this upright piano. Now, it was not a Murphy bed. But as we were standing there admiring the piano, my cousin's wife said to me, Hey, do you remember that piano at your grandma's house that folded down into a bed? And I was so excited because somebody else actually remembered, somebody besides me. Um, so when I decided to build the homestead house, obviously that's a piece of furniture that I wanted to put in the house. So I started to do a little bit of investigating online to see what I could find out about these piano Murphy beds. And the one that I found was actually manufactured in the late 1800s. And it wasn't a real piano. It looked exactly like a piano, um, but it had no innards of a piano, which explains why I don't have any memory of actually playing that piano. But basically, people who were, um, I'm going to say, middle to upper middle class people would have this piece of furniture in their parlor, more for status than anything else because it looked like you had a piano, but it also folded then down into a bed when they had unexpected company. Now, how my grandparents ever got a hold of something like that, I don't know, because they were certainly not middle class, let alone upper middle class. Um, they were pretty darn poor, but somehow they ended up with this piece and it was in the living room throughout my whole childhood. So I'm going to do my best to recreate that piece. When I was investigating that piece, I came across a couple of pictures which were hugely instrumental in helping me to design this piece because I really didn't know how to build a piano Murphy bed. So the pictures that I found show one where it's upright and one where the bed is folded down. So those are the pictures that I'm going to use and I'll pop them up for you here. Also, I've had to do this video in two parts. I found that once I got all of the filming done, it was just going to simply be too long of a video to put into one. So I've split it in half, uh, but I will post them very close together so that if you are following along and you want to watch the second half, then you'll be able to do that fairly quickly. So let's have a look at what we need for this build and then we'll get started. So here are all the things that I used to make this piece of furniture. So the majority of the Piano Murphy bed is made out of 1 16th of an inch plywood. I also used a small piece of chipboard, which is about the same width. Um, we have a couple different kinds of glue. Uh, the majority of the project is made out of wood, so I've got some wood glue. And then we're also going to be uh, gluing on a couple of metal pieces, so I've got my E6000 glue as well. I have some small stir sticks. These are the coffee wood stirs. They're five and a half inches by about, I think they're four millimeters wide. I'm not sure what that is, probably an eighth of an inch. 
you will also need some of these little mini hinges. So I've used seven in this project. Um, and then I also have a couple of these brads that we'll be using to uh, make the bed swivel up and down. Um, the ones that I used in the video, it turned out I had to change them out after I was finished because they just weren't long enough and they kept pulling out on me. Um, so when you see in the video, they are a little bit smaller than these ones, but I did end up changing them out. Um, I've also got some polymer clay that I'm going to be using to make the keyboard. I have some other options for you in the video. If you don't um, use polymer clay or don't have polymer clay, there's a few options for how to make that um, keyboard. And so you just have to stay tuned to the video for that. But if you are using the polymer clay, you'll need some white and some black and then a rolling pin for the polymer clay. Um, I've also used this embossing tool. My tweezers, my craft knife, a pair of scissors, my ruler, of course, and then I have this little hand drill that I use for drilling holes. And I'm going to be using about a two millimeter bit in there to drill the holes. And then, of course, my knife sharp pencil and a paintbrush for painting. And that's pretty much it. So let's get started on this project. Um, I'm excited. Before we get started putting these together, we have two pieces that we need to alter. Uh, from the cutting instructions that I've given you. Uh, piece A and piece B. So we're going to start with piece number A. So if you want to take that piece out, you should have a piece that is six and a half inches by two and a half inches or in millimeters as 165 millimeters by 65 millimeters. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece out of there and we're going to cut out a piece that is 19 millimeters on this side and 110 millimeters on this side. And we're gonna cut this piece out, the longer piece. I always start with the cut that goes against the grain. And the reason is that sometimes if you're going with the grain first and then try and cut against the grain right next to it, sometimes it splits that wood all the way down or farther down than you need it to. So I always start with the uh, across the grain piece. So next we're going to measure across the short side, but the bigger of the two short sides. And we're going to go up on this side, 13 millimeters. Now this smaller square is actually going to stay attached to this long piece. It's this square here, or this rectangle here, that we're going to shape. And you can decide for yourself how you want to shape that. If you just want to make a semicircle, you can do that. If you just want to take off the corners a little bit and make it more of a, a squared off piece, you can do that. I just wouldn't recommend leaving sharp corners. So I'm going to go up from this line about two or three millimeters and make another line above that. And then I'm going to take off this corner. So I'm going to round this piece off on this side. And then I'm going to round a little bit on this side as well. So now you can see here that I have this smaller piece and then I have shaped off a rounded piece over here. So here's what I'm going to cut out. I'm going to cut out this little strip here and then I'm going to cut off these two rounded corners.
And now we're left with this shape. I'm going to go in with either some sandpaper or maybe an emery board and I'm going to smooth out those edges so that they don't look too rough cut and you'll need actually two of these and they'll need to be whichever you decide here like I said is fine but you want to make sure that you have two that are the same. Moving on to piece number B. So here's where we're going to make our measurements. So along the short edge, I'm going to measure out 15 sixteenths of an inch or 25 millimeters. Do that on both sides. Now, I would mark here left and right, just so that uh, when we're talking, you know which side I'm talking about. So down that center line from, I'm going to say the top up here, I'm going to measure down 54 millimeters. And then I'm also going to measure 93 millimeters. And then on the right edge, the same measurements, I'm going to go to 54. And 93. And you can draw a line across there as well. Okay. So this piece and this piece will be cut away and what we'll be left with is this full side and then this small piece on the right hand side. So let's get rid of those two pieces just so that they're out of the way and not a distraction. Again, cutting across the grain first. Now this is the piece that we're going to shape to look like the side view of a keyboard on a piano. So you can choose for yourself however you want that to look. You just need one piece of a flat edge on this side. So here's the design that I came up with. You can use it or you can use something different. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to come out 12 millimeters from this side. And then I'm going to come down about five millimeters from there. Five or six. And then I'm just going to kind of start shaping more of a scrolled kind of look on this side. So as you can see, I've gone in and I've just drawn out um, a shape on there. Um, and you don't have to follow this exactly if you just want to round them on both sides that's fine the only thing that you want to make sure that you do is you leave about a 10 millimeter or one centimeter space that has the flat edge on the front and you'll see why as we get farther into that build so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut both of these pieces out off the corners and then we'll have to make another piece exactly the same I've also rounded off the corner down on the left hand side at the bottom as well. Um, this piece is actually going to swivel to open and close and if you leave that square you won't be able to move it as freely as if you round it off. So I've just shaved that off and sanded it down as well. Next we need to mark out where we're going to drill the holes so that those pieces can pivot. So if you go on to piece A 
and I'll have you measure in from the outside of the long edge. We're going to go in 36 millimeters. And then from the bottom, we're going to go up 44 millimeters. And wherever that point is, just draw a little circle that's just a couple millimeters across in diameter. And you need to do that on both of those pieces. On piece B, the measurements are 11 millimeters from the long side in and 36 millimeters from the bottom. And wherever those two measurements intersect, you'll need to draw a little circle there as well. We'll go in with our hand drill and we'll drill those holes out. So I have my little hand drill. And this is about a two to two and a half millimeter bit here. I'm just going to go in and just quickly drill those holes. We'll sand all these little bits of sliver pieces that are standing up. Okay, step one. You're going to need both of your piece A's and your piece F, which is the back of the piano. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start by gluing these into a three-sided box. So I'm just going to put glue on one side first. The piano side is going to go to the outside so that the uh, back piece is on the inside. Make sure that that's nice and flush on both sides. And then we'll use our setup blocks to hold it in place until it dries. Then we'll do the other side. The next piece to go on is piece D, which is the bottom of the piano. So I'm going to put glue on three sides. And that's going to sit inside of all of these three pieces. While that base is drying, if you want to pull out your pieces C, so you should have two of those. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a hinge in between the two. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure off an inch from each end on each piece. Those are going to be the guides for where the hinges are going to go. Now this wood is not thick enough to actually put nails through or put pins through. So I'm just going to glue those hinges on. Anytime I'm going to glue metal, I like to use E6000 glue. I just think it holds metal better uh, than the wood glue does. And then with a toothpick, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue 
to each side. Now be careful which side you're putting your glue on. You want that bulkier side of that hinge to be on the top. I'm going to lay that on the inside of that line that I drew. And we'll do the same to the other one. And I'll put glue on the other side. We're going to put our second piece of wood, make sure that they're flush on both sides. And we'll glue that side down. I'm going to let that dry for a bit. The E6000 glue doesn't set up quite as quickly as the wood glue does, so give it some time uh, to set up for you uh, because we don't want those hinges popping off. We'll bring in piece E next, and we're just going to flip this over. This is the front side. I don't want to lose where my front side is, so I'm just going to turn it over this way. And I'm going to glue this little piece onto the top of this little piece. Like so just put glue along one edge. You want to make sure that it's flush against the front as well as on either side. What this little piece will do is it'll actually hold the Murphy bed up and tucked away uh, when it's not in use. Glue that top hinge piece now onto the top of the piano. Now this is going to sit flush against the back of the piano and it does overhang just a tiny bit on either side. It's about a millimeter, millimeter and a half. And we want to glue it down so that this piece opens and closes. So when we're gluing, we're only going to glue the back piece on. So if you want to make a pencil mark on your, on the top of each side where that back piece ends, so that you're not putting too much glue. And then we're going to put glue around those three sides, making sure that we're not coming too far forward. Have you take out your pieces marked B and we're going to test them before we put them together. So this part where the hole is, is going to be at the bottom. 
and the rounded part of this piece goes towards the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this hole with this hole. And I'm just going to put just a little stick in there, anything that uh, will fit just to hold it. Um, and then I just want to test and make sure that this piece slides down to the bottom. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit tight in there. I think because the bottom of this is just a little bit too long. So I'm gonna shave off just a millimeter or so off of the bottom of this piece, just to give it a little bit more clearance and then we'll retry. See how that works. Oops. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so I'm going to try that on the other side as well, just to make sure that the other side fits. And that one is a little bit high up at the top. Just rubs just a touch at the top. So we'll take a little bit off of here. So I'm just going to put this back piece aside for a bit and we'll work on these two pieces next. Okay, so we've got our two pieces marked B and then we need piece H, which is the front of the piano or the bottom of the bed, depending on which angle you're looking at. And so what we're going to do is we're going to glue this piece right along this edge and over top of this piece that juts out. Just make sure when you're gluing on the second piece that the holes that you've drilled are both at the same end. So we'll go ahead and put some glue on the other side. The next piece that we'll glue in is piece I, and you're going to want to glue that in on the square side as opposed to the rounded side. So this is just going to sit inside these three pieces. It will help to square this up as well. Do the two short sides and one long side. For the next step, you're going to need to measure down and draw a line at about 
3 8 of an inch from the top of the piano. So the top of the piano, remember, is the squared off piece. So if you want to measure down on both sides and just draw a line across. We're going to add three pieces. And those pieces, when the bed is up and it looks like a piano, will be more decorative pieces for the piano itself. But when the Murphy bed comes down, they'll act as legs on the bottom part of the bed for support. So I have three pieces marked J. And these are going to sit so that the long end, because one end is shorter, the long end is going to go across the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all three of those pieces um, in like so, evenly spaced, but I'm going to do them on a hinge so that when the piano or the bed comes down, those pieces then can flip up so that they're perpendicular then to the back of the piano. So I think what I'll do first is I'll put the hinges onto the back of the piano first and then we'll attach them to these three pieces. Now I've measured out where I'm going to put those hinges so that they're all evenly spaced. You may decide to eyeball it and that's fine. Now it doesn't matter whether you put this hinge, whether you put the middle where the um, where the hinge part is on that end, if you put that right on the line, if you put this on the line, it really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with all three. Because regardless of where you place these wood pieces on this surface, when you unfold it, it's going to come out the right distance to act as a support for the leg. Um, but if you are inconsistent on where you put them, then once it's folded down, if you look at it from the side, they're all going to be at different spots or different locations on this side. So wherever you decide, um, just make sure that you're doing the same for all three hinges. So give those a good amount of time to dry. We don't want them to shift when we glue on the other side. 